Okay, this is the last session of our conference and we are approaching now also the closing uh, of our conference. Before I give uh, the word to uh, Monica Rumler, uh, just a few words on uh, what's going to happen now. Uh, we are going to give out an award, the Leonardo da Vinci Award, the Leonardo da Vinci Medal, and it's the highest distinction Sefi gives. Uh, and it, it's awarded to, it's awarded by the board of directors, it's awarded to living persons, not so much Sefi persons, but persons that Sefi sees that they have made an outstanding contribution to engineering education that has an international significance. Somebody is raising a hand, but I cannot see <laughs> what that is. I, uh, I'm giving the floor to Monica Rumper. Thank you, dear SIFI community, and especially dear Günther Heidmann. I'm pleased to meet your request, Professor Verbes, President of SIFI, and Professor Heiss, Vice President of TU Berlin, to hold a laudatory speech about Günther Heidmann. Today online, we are able to honor him as this year's recipient of the renowned SIFI Leonardo da Vinci Medal. I was asked to speak today, and I'm honored to do so, in recognition of our long shared history as colleagues and friends. Günther, I've had many occasions to observe your thorough and brilliant mind at work. You combine subtlety in teaching and profound knowledge, as well as the art of asking good and thought activating questions and a clear position and statement in your attitude to improve the future of engineering education. The activities of your busy path of life and career are numerous and too many to list here. So I will highlight some selected merit, merits. For further reading, you will find an extension version of this Laudatia later on the website. Already during his study of industrial engineering and economics at TU Berlin, he was student representative in the German Commission for Engineering Education. After graduation in 1969, he was co-founder of the Institute for, für Hochschuldidaktik at TU Berlin, one of the first centers for teaching and learning in higher education at a German university. He started his professional work in a project about integrated curricula in engineering education and possibilities of creating a comprehensive university for Berlin. From 1972 until 2003, he worked as a tenured scientist at the center with focus on curriculum development, new teaching and learning concepts, qualifications research and international approaches to engineering education. As a member of the German Association for Educational and Staff Development in Higher Education, he contributed in particular to a reference framework for the pedagogical qualification of teaching staff in higher education in 1994, which formed the basis for a modularized continuing education program for teaching staff at TU Berlin, which until today is successfully provided and continuously updated and expanded. Günther Heidmann's outstanding performance as active SEFI member started shortly after SIFI's foundation with TU Berlin as one of the founding parties, when he became official representative for almost 30 years. He engaged himself successfully in different activities and consequently has been appointed SIFI fellow and granted an honorary membership. Some important steps were taken as co-founder of the first SIFI curriculum development working group thus building the advancing wheel of today's SEFI organizational structure. He contributed to more than 20 annual workshops and conferences resulting in proceedings and publications. He was involved as board member and chair of working groups in EU Socrates thematic networks for higher engineering education in Europe. As chair of a special interest group he was in charge to develop a glossary of terms in engineering education 
which was applied in publications of different thematic networks and the European Network for Accreditation of Engineering Education, NIE. For CEFI, he also expanded the cooperation with the American Society for Engineering Education. Since his retirement in 2003, he was still requested as engineering education senior expert, and expert consultant with activities mainly in three areas, curriculum development, quality assurance, and accreditation of programs and teaching staff development. Until today, he is engaged in the field of European standards of, for accreditation of engineering education of bachelor and master programs implemented during the Polonia process uh, for engineering education contributing to the design of the so-called EURES standards and disseminating the EURES label, also counseling to projects and pro programs in Russia, South Africa, Namibia and the UK. On national level, as member of the advisory board of the Association of German Engineers VDI, he was in 2007 initiator of the first quality dialogue on engineering education offered on a biannual basis. Just tomorrow, it will be continued in, in the 2021 quality dialogue. In summary, in all these years, he yielded and achieved high national and international reputation in the field of engineering education and teaching in higher education, as well as quality assurance and accreditation processes for universities. For you, Günther, all this has not been just a profession, but a calling, and all colleagues and friends you have met during your activities could share this calling. There are few who have done so much for engineering education good teaching and learning and curriculum development also over so long a period as you. So we can be grateful that today, in the face of changing reality at universities and global challenges, you remind us to stay always engaged with our life passions and goals. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to celebrate this award in person with you. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, uh, Monica, for this uh, impressive laudatio. And uh, I see Gunter. Ah, Gunter is there. Hi, Gunter. Uh, congratulations. Uh, you really deserve this award. Like I was saying, this is the Leonardo uh, da Vinci Award, the highest distinction uh, Safi uh, bestows. And of course, we have chosen the name of Leonardo da Vinci for good reasons. I mean, Leonardo da Vinci we know was an Italian of the high Renaissance, but he was active in many domains, painter, draughtsman, engineer, scientist, theorist, sculptor, and architect. And I think you also were very, were very active in many domains. And in some of these domains, you have been an architect making up new plans. And you have been a painter designing uh, things. And I am sure that, uh, for instance, for teaching education, yeah, you have made the world nicer, more beautiful. And uh, I'm really happy to give you this award. Now, we, I am not in Berlin and you are not in Leuven. And uh, I want to show, I have to see that, yeah. yeah. So this is the medal you're going to get. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's going to be engraved with your name and date. And uh, we is a way of showing our appreciation, our deep, profound appreciation for the work uh, you have done uh, on the international significance of, of it uh, very clearly. Uh, thank you very much, Gunther. And I invite you to say a few words to us. Thank you, dear Professor Babas. Thank you very much for awarding me the Leonardo da Vinci Medal on behalf of the European Society of Engineering Education, and also thank you for your very kind words. I feel deeply honored and uh, I'm happy to receive this prestigious medal. Many thanks also to my former colleague and good friend Monica for her very personal laudatio. 
she highlighted some of my contributions and reminded me on how my professional career at the TU Berlin started, shaping the topics and the approaches of my work. Two examples for that. At the end of the 60s, Germany was undergoing tremendous changes of higher education to a large extent. This was caused by student critique and demonstrations, but also by serious proposals of student associations where I have been involved in. They demanded, among other issues, an increased social relevance and focus of academic study program and of professional qualification. This already in 1968 led to the introduction of project-based learning and the interdisciplinary studies at TU Berlin and at other European universities centered around crucial real world problems or in the terminology of today, challenges. I very much promoted these theoretical and practical approaches to curriculum development and student learning. And I kept involved in elaborating and disseminating these concepts of teaching and learning in various contexts. And even if it took 50 years, I can see it prospering and spreading. And this is also a kind of satisfaction I, I have. Secondly, in the beginning of the 70s, I contributed to a project of the European Council. It aimed at a harmonization of curricula in Europe in higher education, asking experts in various disciplines for respective curriculum proposals. For engineering, our expert team rejected this target and expectation uh, and favored an approach of a unity in diversity, building on the richness and traditions of higher education of the countries in Europe and beyond. Consequently, we plead for an increase of mutual information and mutual recognition for transparency and dissemination of good practice, for cross-border collaboration on common programs, and for student and staff exchanges. Fortunately, this happened finally, and this proposal perfectly fitted also into the expansion and creation of transnational networks, and in particular also to the foundation of CIFI in 1972. Facing new challenges and conditions, I'm confident that the idea of a network of working groups in CIFI will continue to expand and successfully contribute to creative solutions and high quality of engineering education, of scholarly teaching, and of competence-oriented learning. I'm also grateful that TU Berlin supported my contributions to internationalization of engineering education. Uh, and I'm proud even that the increase, the interest and the commitment of TU Berlin uh, to activities of CFI persists and even increase in the last years, as you can uh, see and may have experienced at this successful annual conference, organized and provided under the challenging conditions of the corona pandemic. Hopefully, uh, we'll soon come back to at least hybrid modes of conferencing and meetings and enjoy again face-to-face -face events and uh, discussions. So thank you again for the kind words and the award of the prestigious Leonardo da Vinci Medal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations. And also in the chat, lots of congratulations. Uh, we're now continuing and uh, Anu Mati Jarvinen will, as a, as a chair of the conference, 
uh, organization, international conference organization, uh, will, uh, will hand out best papers awards. The floor is yours, Anomati. Well, thank you. Uh, I think that my messy uh, home <laughs> room will give, uh, as I'm now giving feedback, I'm a person <laughs> and uh, not just uh, a number. Uh, a few words uh, about um, how the selection was done. So we have uh, several uh, best papers, research paper, concept paper, short paper, student paper, and Susanne Ixen uh, paper. And um, for each of these uh, awards, we had uh, a separate committee. And um, uh, for these committees, um, <clears throat> uh, we had, well, uh, uh, well, quite many people participating in, I come it shortly, but what I had to say is that we had a problem with student papers, not because we didn't get them, there were some of them, but there were a, a clear confusion, uh, what is meant by a student? Is it, uh, does a doctoral student apply or should it be master level student? And that was um, uh, differently uh, interpreted in uh, different organizations. Hence, uh, this year we don't have student paper award, but we have to take care of making clear definition, what is a student paper. Now, uh, I try to share my slides. And uh, I hope that you will now see uh, many thanks to the okay. research paper. You do? <laughs> yes, we see it. Okay, so uh, I first introduced, uh, this is the committee selecting best research paper award. It was chaired by Gerhard Müller and members were Frederick Jörgson, Gareth Thompson, Christina Edström, Renate Klaassen, Ronald Tor Torme. I hope you recognized your own name. And uh, the best uh, research paper was uh, towards stakeholders specific visualization of learning paths in software engineering teaching. And there were several uh, authors, Henry Bomström, Otis Evikorte, Terhi Kilamo, Kari Systä, Elina Annanperä, Markus Kelanti, and Kari Liukkunen. Uh, if any of you are uh, present here, please open your video and perhaps say something so that we all can see you. Nobody appears in my screen. Well, it's a webinar and I don't think the, the, uh, oh, they can't open. Cannot, no. Well, that's uh, a pity. Okay. Anyway, congratulations for the uh, whole set of uh, uh, authors. And uh, if you were look at the carefully, those who selected, they were not from Tumbra University, and I didn't uh, interfere here. Even I, if half of these are on the same corridor than I am. The motivation for this paper was, uh, this paper presents a novel concept to the identification of learners' needs in online context. The authors present an interesting approach to explore uh, various opportunities for visualizing the learning path to create transparency regarding learners' process, progress. 
Such information can support teachers in proactively steering the learning process and identifying students in need of support. And the student can inspire other disciplines for further research. And the paper was presented very clearly and questions from the audience, especially about ethical issues, were well handled. Okay, then we go to the next. It was this best concept paper. It was chaired by Wim Van Petenkeim. And I was also a member of this, then Calvin Ranz, Patrick Turian, Sonia Gomez Puente, and Tine de la. And uh, the best concept paper was the value of interdisciplinary presentations for engineering students. And the author was Witten Peter. Well, I hope you <laughs> got your name. And motivation, it addresses the topic of how to make engineering students more proficient in presenting for their work for different audiences, from peers to laypersons. The concept they introduce is audience analysis as a key element in the training of the students to acquire a higher level of competence in presenting. This paper might inspire other engineering programs to include a similar step in their trainings for presentation skills. And it might also spark more research in order to optimize the workshop and the training itself. Well, now I know that uh, Peter can't uh, show up, but uh, congratulations for him for the best concept paper. And now we've continued to the best short paper of our committee. It was shared by Natasha Van Hattumhas Janssen, and uh, members were Neil Cook, Severin Spalek, and Tracy Craig. And the award goes to build in, and they will come, maintaining students' access to fab fabrication and testing during a pandemic. And authors are Matteo Di Benedetti, Benedetti, Andrew Garrard, and Stephen Beck. And motivation. It provides a good level of a qualitative detail of a case study in civil engineering in migrating to remote lab. It presents an interesting approach to conducting lab work for students during the pandemic while focusing on student learning and improving the course post pandemic. And again, congratulations for the short paper, the best one. And then we had a award to honor Susanne Isen. And um, it's award on diversity, diversity and inclusiveness. Yes. And uh, we had uh, clear, well, criteria for the other awards, but for these ones, I think the only criteria was on its name. So the uh, committee shared by Luis Ruiz, or Luis Sanchez Ruiz, yes, uh, Bente Nergard and Katrina Schrey had to also figure out the final criteria. And the award is, uh, well, the title, Diversity, Equality and Inclusion in Engineering Education, an Exploration of European Higher Education Institute's Strategic Frameworks, Resources and Initiatives. And there are several authors, Ines Direita, Shannon Chance, Line Clemensen, Sophie Krabs, Sophia Economides, uh, Sierra Isaac, Anne Marie Jolie, Fiona Truscott, and Natalie Wind. And motivation. It clarifies the terms diversity, equity, and inclusion by examining how eight different universities in seven European countries engage these values at an organizational level. 
I want to uh, congratulate on the Susanne Eriksen Award on diversity and inclusiveness. And uh, these were all the awards. I still want to thank the organizers as the role of the co-chair. Co you have made great job and we have had a great uh, conference. Thank you. Thank you, Hanna Mati, and congratulations to all those who have received an award. Uh, we come, uh, we are going further in our closing uh, uh, ceremony, and uh, I don't know if you attended our General Assembly on uh, Tuesday. If you did, you will have heard that we have a new strategic plan. SEFI has a new strategic plan for the next three years. And if you allow me, I will read out our uh, mission and vision, and then you will see how this wonderful conference is really uh, it's really helping us to reach uh, our mission and our vision. So the mission of CEFI is to contribute to the development and improvement of engineering education and to strengthen the understanding and knowledge of engineering education by bringing together stakeholders through sharing ideas, good practices, common goals and experiences. The scope of activities of SEFI comprises engineering education and continuing engineering education for professionals that reflect the importance and responsibilities of engineers within society and in a global context. And our vision is to give inspiration to our members in their endeavors to evolve our engineering education community. We strengthen the connections that encourage and support others to become involved in the improvement of engineering education for the good of people and the planet. So this conference is all about bringing relevant stakeholders together. It's all about sharing ideas, good practices, our common goals and our experiences. It's all about giving inspiration to our members and strengthening the connections. So I certainly will go home with so many new ideas to improve my work at home, with new connections I made in this uh, conference. So I hope that all of you have the same feeling about this conference. Of course, this was only, only possible by this professionally run conference. So I want to thank the whole TU Berlin team for really making this conference successful. Uh, I will not say because it's a large team, everybody, but I certainly want to thank uh, Hans Ulrich Heiss, of course, huh? Annette Meyer, uh, Alexandra Schulz, and Lisa Hertel. But I know there are many more in this very professional and good theme. I would like to applaud here to this uh, very good team and to thank them for this wonderful uh, conference. Of course, also a word of thanks goes to our sponsors. For those who were not there two days ago at our General Assembly, I want to tell them that we have, uh, and it's a pleasure to tell you, that we have elected Professor Hannu Mati Jarvenen from Finland that you just have seen in the previous uh, giving out the awards as our new uh, president and Professor Luis Sanchez from uh, Valencia as a new vice president. And I'd like to invite Anumati Garvinen to say a few words. Anumati. Uh, thank you. I first have to thank <laughs> about this honor to be selected uh, as um, uh, president of CEFI. Uh, I'm honored. I think that uh, after two years, I can look at if I'm also proud what I've done. But I'm sure I can say that Yolanda can be proud of her work, as well as uh, Mike and so many 
people that have preceded uh, me in this position. Uh, we have a good uh, strategy, just uh, what we just heard. And uh, that's how we can work in the future. Sefi has one thing that I like uh, most. It's not only engineering. It's not only teaching. But it is the whole engineering education. It includes ethics. It includes diversity. It, it, in, it includes attractiveness, sustainability. And that's what I like. It's a great uh, property in our uh, organization. Sefi, as an organization, it's just an organization, but it has a mission and it has a vision. And those are what are important. Uh, I'm sure that uh, we can work in the future nicely with this group, which have just uh, elected and who will continue. And uh, I hope uh, you will uh, enjoy CEFI conferences and work groups, uh, special interest groups, etc in the future too. Thank you. I give the word to Annette Meyer. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, okay. Here is the Heidmann, dear Sefi Presidium, dear conference participants, dear colleagues. Uh, on behalf of Mr. Uli Heiss, uh, Vice President of TU Berlin and Chair of CEFI 2021, uh, I would like to address the closing words uh, to you today. My name is Annette Meyer. I'm the Director of the Center of, uh, for Scientific Education and Cooperation in TU Berlin and the Co-Chair of the, uh, this year's CEFI. Um, when we first sat together um, in our local organizing committee, uh, almost uh, exactly um, uh, this time, uh, last year, we were still firmly convinced that we would be able to hold the CEFI uh, here on Theo Berlin grounds in 2021. <laughs> Unfortunately, for well-known reasons, this was not possible. And so this year we hold the CEFI in online format um, for the second time. Um, um, focus of the conference was um, to reflect on the challenges, but also the opportunities associated with online teaching. The trend of digitalization has become an integral part uh, of education and has been reinforced of the current situation. And uh, we have all become um, more involved with online teaching approaches because of the pandemic. Um, and many of you are real experts in methods and tools of digital teaching. So we were able to share ideas, for example, um, on uh, just-in-time teaching, flipped classrooms, uh, gamification, project-based learning, e-assessment, etc. cetera. Uh, and, and many points we were um, also able to reflect on what is also necessary for good learning, namely social interaction uh, and personal contact. And um, we had some approaches on how to cultivate the pedagogical and social dimension of learning in the digital environment. I think this year's conference was also very stimulating and inspiring. And we were also able to exchange ideas well with persons. Um, we will certainly transfer many of uh, the approach and methods and new techniques into the future, even if Hopefully, teaching is face-to-face -face formats will soon be possible again. Um, blended learning and engineering education is an enrichment for the various formats and all interdisciplinary part of teaching. And um, now I want um, sincerely thanks to the sponsors. I think Lisa will show us the sponsors in the background. Thank you. Um, and I was happy thanks to the keynote speakers, Beverly Gibbs, Roger Hedgraft, and Naomi Winston, to all chairs, speakers, and participants, as well as the representatives of the special interest group six for their commitment and contributions. 
and look at the numbers. Maybe it's, it's interested for you. We have 267 initial submissions and 192 accepted submissions. And we have um, in this conference 142 presentation with a total running time of 2,130 minutes. <laughs> um, we have uh, 35 poster pitches and 15 workshops. And we have 405 participants from 32 countries and every continent. I think um, these numbers are very impressive. Um, my express thanks go to Lisa Hadl and her team from TUPS organizing the conference and arranging the social program. Thank you very much. It was um, wonderful work. And my special thanks go to my team, especially uh, Mrs. Alexandra Schulz and Monika Rumler, Anja Wipper and Christoph Lackner who took care of the call of the papers, the review phase, the scientific board in exchange in the local organizing team and the, uh, in the last month. Uh, <laughs> a big thank you to all of you. Finally, I would like to thank the outgoing president, Yolanda Burbers, um, for her trust in TU Berlin <laughs> organizing the conference. And um, I would like to congratulate the new president, Hanno Matijavinen, on his presidency on CEFI. We wish you a good hand in guiding the destiny of CEFI. And now I hand over the stage to Mrs. Ariadna Lauren, the next chair of the CEFI conference in Barcelona at 2022. Um, um, I pass the baton to you and we keep our fingers crossed <laughs> that we will all meet, meet again next personal year in, also in personal in Barcelona and next year. Take good care of you and stay healthy, everyone. Ariadna, it's your turn. The stage is yours. I don't see her, but I hope. Yes, I am here. Oh, yes. Yes. Can, can you see me? No. <laughs> no? Just listen me? Listen, oh. yes. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think okay. the camera no. isn't on. No. No, perhaps. No. No, we can't see you. No. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Um. I don't know. I let me see. I don't know. Well, um, do you hear me at least? Yes, we, we hear. Well, well, in this case, I'm, I'm going to talk and, and I don't know why it's impossible to see me. But anyway, yes, my name is Ariadna Llorenz. I am here from the Institute of Education Science of the Universitat Politécnica de Catalunya, Barcelona Tech. And it is my pleasure to invite you all to participate in the CEFI annual conference that will take place between 19 and 22 of September, 2022 in Barcelona. The UPC is a public institution of research and higher education in the fields of engineering, architecture, science and technology and one of the leading technical universities in Europe. Ariadna, I'm just receiving a message that it should be possible now that we see you. Ah, okay. Much nicer. <laughs> well, I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> I'm it. <laughs> okay. Well, I will start again then if you, if you want. Yes? Okay. My name is Ariadna and I came from the Institute of Education, Science, of the Universitat Politécnica de Catalunya, Barcelona Tech. It's my pleasure to invite you, all of you, to participate in the CEFI annual conference that will take place between 19 and 22 of September, 2022 in Barcelona. The UPC is a public institution of research and higher education in the fields of engineering, architecture, science and technology and one of the leading technical universities in Europe. Every year, 
more than 6,000 bachelor's and master's students and more than 500 doctoral students graduate with us. Each Institute of Education Science is the academic unit that contributes to the enhancement of quality education at the UPC. As all you know, the CEFI annual conference is one of the biggest events of this type in Europe. It's a unique opportunity for professors, students, industry, and professional organizations to exchange their views and to meet their peers and create an European network of contacts. The topic proposed for CEFI 2022 towards new scenarios in engineering education reflects the objectives of the society and the priorities identified by its members. The enthusiastic and commitment participation of all those interested in joining the annual conference will allow us to reaffirm our conviction that in the collective exchange, we will find lines of work and elements of collaboration in engineering education. And we will do so by celebrating the 50th CEFI annual conference and in turn, we are also celebrating the 50th anniversary of the UPC. We are convinced that Catalonia in general and the city of Barcelona in particular, with the hospitality that characterizes them, will ensure that participants in the conference spend fruitful moments of scientific exchange, as well as the spaces for collaboration that will contribute and strengthen the research networks and research projects that unite this great CEFI community. Finally, obviously, I would like to congratulate the excellent, excellent organization of this fantastic CEFI 2021 or conference in Berlin. Thank you very much. And I join the hope that in Barcelona, we can finally share face-to-face -face contributions in the desire to leave this terrible pandemic behind. So, us esperem a Barcelona. We are looking forward to meet you in Barcelona. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you, Ariadne. I think uh, everybody's looking forward to going to Barcelona. Barcelona, for many people, is the place to be. But uh, for Safi, next year, Barcelona will be certainly in September the place to be. So I encourage everybody uh, to have to watch out for the call for papers, to watch out for the invitations you will get, to watch out for the registration possibilities. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing all of you, all of you uh, attendees uh, next year in Barcelona. So take care, all of you, be healthy, then we can go to Barcelona. Bye-bye. <laughs>